So in this part we will start creating the layout for the carriage panel and for this we are going to use some built-in functionality in Unity. Uh, when I started creating this tutorial back in 4.6 uh, Unity didn't have all those functions um, or it had some of the functions but they didn't work very well but uh, since Unity 5.0 they have very improved very much on it so uh, we might as well give it a shot and use for some of those things um, to create the layout so you can see how those also work. So um, to do this we need to use some layout groups and some different things um, and I'm going to build up this uh, character panel as it was in another game like World of Warcraft where we have, as you saw in the intro, um, some items on the left side, some items on the right side and then our weapons in the bottom of uh, our character panel. So we are going to do this step by step. Basically our character panel is also going to be some kind of inventory because we need to store stuff in it and we need to move stuff from it. But um, it's going to be a little different uh, because some of the functionality in the inventory is not usable in the character panel so we need to change some things around so later we're also gonna add a new script called character panel instead of just using the plain inventory script but uh, for now let's just focus on the on the visual part and then later we can start coding our stuff so basically our character panel is also gonna be a uh, inventory so we can take our inventory here and we can right click on it and we can click duplicate to duplicate it because there are some things on here that we would like to keep. So we might rename this to character panel to just press F2 on it and then rename it to character panel or char panel for short for example. So we might already do something here um, because later, uh, not right now, but later we need to show our stats uh, next to our character panel and these stats need to be uh, disappear when we close the character panel and when we open it for example they need to show up so we need to put them under a common game object so uh, just for now already we can click create create empty and we can name this um, what should we call it ja panel uh, holder so this one also needs to go inside the canvas and the char panel here needs to be a child object of uh, the char panel holder. So we have the holder up here and then we have the char panel and later we are also going to put the, the stats underneath this char panel so we can hide this char panel and hide the um, char panel holder and we will hide the char panel at the same time. So actually we need to click on the char panel and add component and we need to add a canvas group because when we hide that canvas group we will also hide our uh, char panel so on the char panel we already have a canvas group as far as I remember down here and we don't need that because the canvas group is already sitting up here so click on the char panel go to the canvas group right click on it and remove component and then you can take the char panel and you can place it somewhere else on your screen so that uh, we can work with it without um, overlapping some other things. So we could move it down here and yeah, just place it around here. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is to set up this uh, char panel because now we would be able to change this char panel holder and change the value so we will hide our inventory, for example. So that functionality we already have. So we need to go to the chart panel and remove some things and add some things and so on. So right now we have these triggers here and we still need them. We still need to be able to move in over our chart panel and we need to be able to um, set up the different, um, uh, move the items into the chart panel. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we have the inventory script here and we don't need the exact inventory script because right now when we would play our game, it's going to try to create some kind of inventory here and we are not interested in that so we need to set it up by ourselves so we had a set um, yeah a set a amount of slots so actually we can just right click on our inventory and remove component so we don't set it up when we start our game because we will always like to set it up by ourselves so to do that we need to add a grid layout group and a grid, grid layout group can place different items in a grid over um, yeah, inside a parent for example so that we can place our slots correctly down here and to the right and then up again. 
So right click on add, uh, just click on add component and right grid and then you'll see this grid layout group comes up. And what this layout group does is that it can actually pad out or uh, lay out different components inside this character panel here. So inside the panel we will be adding some different slots, one for head, one for neck and shoulders and so on. So we can go to our uh, prefabs and we can take a um, slot and drag it onto the character panel as a um, as a child object. So if we would click on this object here, uh, the, our slot object, and right click and duplicate, we we'll see that it will be placed underneath it, and that is because of the char, char panel here. So we could keep duplicating these, and it would just keep lining them up like this downward. But we need to set it up so that we'll place it the way we want it um, in our chart panel, as we saw in the beginning. A line down, a line to the right, and then a line up. So we can click on the chart panel and go to the grid layout group and set it up as we want it to. So first of all, we don't want our slots to be at the edge of the, of the panel. We would like a little uh, gap between um, the edge of the panel and the edge of the slot. So we can set five here you can see it just moved to the right because we did that there's a little edge now and we want five to the right so we're also gonna do that later and we want five in top and we want five in the bottom as well so we have a little we're gonna have a little space around our our slots as well um, then the cell size here well the cell size will actually be deciding from our um, our uh, char panel script so when you set it up you can just set it as the same size as um, or kind of the same size as our as the rest of our slots for example but for now let's just put that 20 and 20 just to do that and then we can always set it from the other script later um, spacing between the slots right now um, it's hard to see maybe we can zoom in here you'll see that there are no spacing in between them and to fix the spacing, we can go to spacing here and say that x should be 5 and y should also be 5. So now you see they're starting to line up as we want them to. There's going to be 5 units here and 5 up here. Okay. So starting corner is upper left. Start axis is horizontal, so it starts aligning him uh, this way instead of downwards. If we would change horizontal to vertical, you'll see that they will start aligning downward instead. We'll just keep it at horizontal. Child alignment, upper lift, that's fine. And we can set a constraint here. So right now it's, it's flexible, uh, which means that whenever you put something, it's just going to be flexible in the size. But we can decide or dictate how many columns we want. So if we click a fixed number of columns, we can say that we want four columns. Because we want all our items to go downward here. Then we want two empty columns, and then we want one more column down here. So to set it up as we want to, we actually need to make some empty slots. So we can actually take all these slots and duplicate them. And we can take them all again and duplicate them. So you'll see that we have some extra slots here. So in my game I only have five down and then I have uh, two in the middle and then one up here, so one, two, three, four, five. We need to go here, so we need to delete four slots. So the four lower slots, we can delete them like this. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, and then we have one, two, and then five up again here. So these in the middle we need to hide so we can't see them. Uh, because if, as far as I can see, you can't place these in a grid without having something in between that is filling up the, the, the empty space. Um, so to be sure that we only have these in the side, we can pick these items in here. This is slot 1. We can click on it, press F2, and call it a filler. And we can delete the stacks, because we don't need that. And we can click on the filler, and we can remove the slot function, the fl slot uh, script. And we can remove the slot that button here, and the triggers is also not needed. So we only have an image right now. So basically we don't need the MSI, so you can right click on and remove component as well. So now you can see down here we have an empty uh, space here. So basically we need to name the correct slots and we need to change the others to fill. So the first one 
is my head slot. And of course, if you want more items, if you want less items, you can scale it as you want. Maybe you want 10 items down here and 10 in the other side or something that's a little extreme, but uh, you could also do that. So the first slot is going to be head, so we're just going to rename to head. As you can see, that's our first one. Then we have a filler, and the next one should also be a filler here, this one. So basically, you can delete that and duplicate your filler up here and move it up here. So we have the uh, fillers. We should have them next to each other. Maybe we can't even do it like that. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't help to move them around here inside because they're just going to move around like this. So instead, you can just click on the next slot, delete the stack, and click on the slot, and then delete everything. We don't need all these uh, components here. There we go. So now we have two fillers here. And you can click on press F2 and call it filler. So I think you might be able to remove components from four objects at f more objects at the time. Uh, so let's see, we have head, filler, filler. Then over here I have put my neck. Uh, the next one after neck is shoulders. Because shoulders is in this side. After my shoulders, there's two fillers again. So I think maybe we can select those two. Right click, remove component, remove component, remove, and remove. And we also need to delete the stacks and both of them because we don't need that. So these two are fillers. And press F2 and filler. Okay, so after the two fillers, we have a belt. And after the belt, we have a chest. And then we have two fillers again, so select these two, delete all the components we don't need. And remember to remove the script cells, you're going to have some problems later. And then delete the stacks, because we don't need any text on it. And rename to filler. And after the two fillers, uh, we just added belt and chest. So we need two fillers, and then we need a ring and legs, so this is a ring. And this is legs, or pants, or what you want to call it. And again, we need two fillers, so just remove all these components. And then delete the stacks. And rename the two of them to filler. And the next two we need is our actually three we need, because now we are down here so soon. So we have ring and legs, then we have two fillers, then we have braces. And then we have our boots. And after that we have our main hand. And then we have our offhand. Main hand and offhand. And then we have our trinket over here. Okay. So now you actually have all your items set up so you can place something in the head slot and in the neck and so on. So now we have named these because later in our code, we're going to check if I want to place a head slot in here, that it is actually a head slot that we want to place it on. And the naming also makes it easier for you to find a slot very fast in here in your hierarchy. So the next thing we need to do is actually to make sure that our background has the same size as our slots. As you can see right now, we have a background up here, but it doesn't overlap the bottom slots here. So if we click on our chart panel again, we can add some more um, components to it. If you click on it and you write a uh, content, then there's going to be a content size fitter. And the content size fitter can make sure that this chart panel has the same size as the content it contains. We click on that, go down here, and we can see that both the horizontal fit and the vertical fit is set to unconstrained. But we want it to have the same size as all our, our slots here. So we can click on the horizontal fit and set it to preferred size. And we can click on the vertical fit and set it to preferred size. So right now it's it's very, very large and it takes up way more space than it actually should. Uh, but the preferred size is set. So to make sure that we don't uh, go over the edges as we do now, we need to add one more component. And that component is a layout element component. So we can click Add Component and write Layout element here. 
and this component can uh, set the max width and height. So right now it's just set th that's the preferred size, and the preferred size right now is um, is the standard size of this um, this Im image here. And our layout uh, c and and our image should be constrained some somehow as we want it. So here we can actually say add a layout element, which um, overrides some functionality in here. So if we click preferred width and preferred height, you will see that it's set to 800 times 600. And we can actually change this to say that it's 0 and 0. And if we do that, it actually um, sets the preferred width to 0 and 0, and the height to 0. And now the content side fitter works a little better in our favor, as you can see. If we um, zoom in here, you'll see that it actually fits very nicely around our slots. So that was actually the visual part so far. Um, so in the next part of the tutorial, we can start um, playing around with the quib in our items and um, making some, some scripts and everything that should work with, it, with, the, with this character panel. But for now, we have uh, created the layout, as you can see, and we have our slots that we should be able to play something in later. So there was this part, so let's move on to the next part where we are going to um, work a little more with the, with the scripting and equipment.